Hi, my name is Zina Begovic. And my name is Andres Nadelku. And we both graduated from biomedical engineering. And for our capstone project, we created a robotic porter for hospitals using 3D mobile imaging. So just to leave in the most simple form, our project follows a robot uh, that is able to travel from point A to point B without human assistance or without being controlled by anyone using 3D imaging. And in our, in our project, we ended up going with a LiDAR uh, in order to give the robot its own eyes that would allow it to navigate through its own environment. So the way that it works is that we have kind of two main systems, one of which is run on uh, a desktop PC using a virtual machine, and then the other system being the robot. And the way that it works is that the PC and the Raspberry Pi on board the robot communicate via Wi-Fi and uh, SSH. And from there, we're able to control the robot on the actual virtual, on the PC in the virtual environment and run commands uh, and give the robot instructions for it to navigate from the PC. And then over the Wi-Fi, the robot will get these commands and enact them in real time. And the reason why we went through this setup is because a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, which we also use to help control the motors, they don't have enough computing power to calculate the cost map and understand exactly how to navigate the environment and then get all the same sensor data and process it properly. So we ended up going with this kind of two brain setup so that we can leave the more complicated calculations for the PC while having a small brain on the actual robot to help with the actual navigation and with controlling the motors and with controlling the LiDAR itself. Put it in almost simpler terms, like from start to finish end product more. After the robot is moved around an environment that's how it creates a map that would show up on the PC for the user and so that map is created with the sensors by being able to sense the obstacles in the room and so you can physically see that like map of hallways or corners and things like that and then the user is able to click on a location on the desktop for that map and then the robot will make its way there. The main key features in terms of the mechanical design was that we had a closing door which is important in a hospital environment to keep any you know, just random passerbys in the hospital from opening and getting the supplies. And then another key feature is the wheels. So those were a really important feature that we found out as we went along. We actually didn't think that the wheel choice was going to be as important at the beginning. But then as we worked through the project, we realized that the material of those can really affect how the prototype turns. So we had to make a lot of adjustments on the placement as well as the material of that. And then the last key feature I'd say would be the height. So we started with a much taller height and then eventually we worked our way down so we had to just keep on changing that prototype as well. We used a variety of software so we started with two virtual machines on Ubuntu and from there we were able to use the robot operating system or ROS. Uh, specifically we used ROS2 and from there the, it comes with a bunch of different tools like Arviz, Gazebo for simulations that allow us to visualize the robot's environment in real time. We used a variety of code including Python and XML and we were able to create both a simulation environment for the robot and and to be able to track the real-time environment using the sensors like the LiDAR and the camera. So a biomedical engineering project can be very broad and can fall under many different categories because there's many different uses for biomedical engineering. There's uses such as the one that our project is in, which is creating a robot that can bring materials around the hospital. But there's also biomedical engineering that has to do with the human body and with patients. And there's also biomedical engineering that has to do with imaging, uh, such as X-ray and the MRI. Creating a biomedical engineering project can be in, under a huge umbrella of different uh, categories. Ours ended up being under robotics, but it's such a big discipline that you can go under any pathway. A robotic porter is just a robot that's able to bring things from one spot to another. For example, there's hotel porters, but the, our porter is special because it's supposed to bring medicine or food or linens or whatever in a hospital environment. And it's supposed to be able to navigate a hectic environment such as a hospital where there's always people going down the halls or you've got patients everywhere or doctors. And it's supposed to be able to alleviate the load from nurses or from doctors or from whoever by being able to bring materials on its own without uh, help from anyone else. And another component that kind of made that different than like other porters in different scenarios was that we had to comply to like as many ISO standards as we could as it's in a hospital setting. The way that we had to get our project titles was everyone had to put in options from a topic list and we ranked them from first through fifth and then whoever basically got drawn first would get their first option and if you if your options were already chosen by the time that they got around to you then you would rewrite out of the topics that were left. Once you're given your group, you're also assigned a professor. Uh, a lot of 
professors also have multiple different students and projects and a lot of them also have a theme for example under our project uh, under our professor the theme was a lot through 3D imaging. The inspiration behind this project would have been to create something that is both useful as well as innovative, as well as increasing our understanding in both the biomedical field and more importantly in the robotics field and getting some more experience there and being able to create something that has a physical prototype and can actually drive around and can actually navigate and being able to create like a physical project and uh, something that you can actually see navigate around an area was very satisfying. The main problem or gap in the field that we were trying to solve was just mainly like focusing on efficiency in hospitals. So obviously if you have a robot that's able to do the job of like three people trying to go to three different rooms to deliver materials or things that patients need quickly. It's a lot easier and more efficient when you have something that can help you do that. You can do even more. Yeah, and it's really nice because you're able to decrease foot traffic inside of a hospital, which is already a very busy environment. And you've got patients running in and out or in certain areas, like in an emergency room, you're gonna be a lot of turnover, a lot of movement in that area. So if you're able to decrease foot traffic in a hospital in any way possible, that's also a really nice use for the, for the robotic order. So um, at the start, we had to kind of brainstorm which type of systems we were going to be using, what type of sensors we were going to be using, uh, and we went through a variety of different ideas during our initial planning phase. So at first, we wanted to use a 3D time of flight camera as our main sensor, but we also really wanted to use the ROS, which was the robot operating system. And the camera of our choice and the operating system actually weren't very compatible. So we had to pivot towards a LiDAR sensor design which then uses a LiDAR and uses uh, which essentially spins very fast and sends out the laser scans uh, out into the environment and based on the amount of time that it takes for those laser scans to return it uh, is able to kind of plot points on a map and see the distances between different objects and the uh, and the sensor and using that we're able to give the uh, the robot its eyes but we also have to choose the right computers to use on board so we used an Arduino in order to control the motors we had to get the motor driver boards, we had to get a uh, Raspberry Pi to be able to communicate. We had to get a special router so that uh, we could set static IPs so that they could always communicate with each other, the PC and the, and the robot. And then we had to worry about a lot of different uh, mechanical features as well when building the, the robot, which I think Xena will be able to get more into. Yeah, so mainly what I worked on is like mechanical and hardware. So originally with that first like schematics were drawn of both the wiring along with the actual design of the robot. So as we said before that physical robot itself went through many changes. So originally we wanted it taller with more compartments so that it could make multiple trips in one kind of path to be more efficient. But as with the sensor not having to be low enough, that design had to change. The mechanical, we went through a couple changes because one thing we had to consider with the materials was um, how they'd be cleaned in a hospital setting along with um, the price of them because that's also something that we had to fund so they had to be something that was strong enough to carry weight as even the battery itself being able to power the robot is quite heavy and with any additional load our robot also had a weight requirement included in the project so that was a challenge originally and then we also had to make sure that any wheels we use wheel setup uh, shafts of the wheels aligned with the motors so that that would be able to run properly and it could make turns without falling over and things like that uh, in other parts of engineering. Uh, we took a medical robotics course uh, during fourth year, which was actually a really good introduction kind of to what it's like to work with robots. Uh, we also took some electrical engineering courses. Um, I think one of the best parts about the biomedical engineering program is that you do get a lot of different perspectives and you do get a lot of different disciplines. So you have some biology courses, but you also have mechanical engineering courses, computer engineering courses, and electrical engineering courses on top of your core uh, biomedical engineering courses. I will say like one major difficulty is the electrical courses that we did get to take because those were during COVID years for us. We did the wiring virtually. So definitely doing the wiring like actually in person in the project, that was a new experience. I'm currently working at the uh, Sunnybrook Foundation as a business intelligence developer, uh, which is a really nice role. And um, I'm really enjoying that as well because even though my role technically isn't very involved with biomedical engineering, I am working at the hospital and I am in an environment where I am able to see different things with biomedical engineering all the time. And that's really nice. And then for me, uh, right now I'm just going through interviews, but <laughs> I'm 
hoping to you know get a position in the biomedical field i did work in the pharmaceutical fields on my co-op so i'm hoping to try something a little bit different maybe something more technology based get a taste for that as well and then in the future i think i want to pursue an mba and hopefully go into project management one big piece of advice for first year students kind of staying organized and especially during your course uh, during third year and uh, second year as those are very difficult years uh, for a lot of students. And if you're able to keep organized and kind of stay on top of all your classes, that's a very big important one. It also helps organization skills and project management skills will help a lot during the capstone process as well. So having a really good organizational foundation is really important. But I think also just pursuing topics that you really enjoy is really important and kind of pushing yourself to go into extracurriculars or things like that that kind of follow the the pathway that you see yourself and not being afraid to just put yourself out there i think that's a really big thing because you will never find out unless you actually throw yourself out there and like try something new yeah i definitely like agree 100 percent with all of those things and then if i put one more last piece of advice i think it would be just not be afraid to like talk to new people and talk to your professors and do all that because like these people could be your future colleagues and things like that and they can really help you throughout your four years so you know don't be afraid to approach someone new and ask them questions work with them and working with new people is just a great experience always even when it comes down to capstone in your final year they'll be happy that you did that